So we have a bunch of interesting facts. Returns are predictable. They're predictable at, at long horizons. Dividend growth isn't predictable. And the volatility of prices seems really high. Our job is to put those together. We're going to use two interesting new tools, the, the linearized present value identity and the vector autoregression. That's going to be the key to putting those facts together and understanding how they relate to each other. Uh, now, I'm going to do this in, 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 I'm going to do the present value identity, and I'm going to do it first in a one period case. The logic then is completely clear, and then we'll move on to the multi period case, which fits in our data. So our first job is, is the linearized return identity from which the linearized present value identity follows. And really, all we're going to do is take the definition of return. So return is dividend over price. This is for a security that only lasts one period. That's the simplifying assumption. No tomorrow's price in there. Take logs of both sides. So little letters stand for logs of big letters. Um, and same for dividend and price. So that just says little r is d minus p. Um, next, I rearrange. So I turn this into a present value identity. That's a return identity. It's already linear. I turn it into a present value identity by bringing the p to the left, subtracting d from both sides. pd is what I call p minus d to save some space. And we've got the price dividend ratio is tomorrow's dividend growth minus tomorrow's return. Now, this is an identity. It's not a theory. It's just a definition of return. It has to hold, and it has to hold ex post after the fact, because given today's prices, the only way you get a higher return is by getting higher dividend growth. So that equation is not an expected equation. It's an ex post equation. But we can turn it into an expected equation. Anything that holds ex post, we can say must hold ex ante. And now it looks like a linearized present value formula. Prices are the present value of future dividends discounted by future returns. But it's all linear, which makes it very useful and easy to use. Now remember, there's no content. The content comes from an economic model of expected return variation. It's just an identity, but it lets us see how the different pieces add up together. And it tells us a lot already. This equation says that prices cannot vary unless expected dividends or expected returns vary. If we lived in an IID world, a coin flip world, then the right-hand side would be the same thing every day, and the left-hand side would be the same thing every day. So the fact that price dividend ratios vary at all tells us that we live in a world that is not IID. Conditional expectations are something are varying over time. Second, this gives us uh, our, our, our main way of interpreting uh, the regressions. The, the old view, the way things should have worked, is, is traders get information that dividend growth will be higher tomorrow. They bid up the prices. And in our regressions, what we see is prices high. And then subsequently, on average, uh, dividends are high. Turns out not to be true, but there's the other possibility. Traders wake up and they get scared. Expected returns go up. They drive prices down. They all try to sell. And in doing so, they drive prices down. What we see is low prices uh, followed by high returns. Uh, in, in that way, prices are revealing to us something about uh, how traders see our information. And, and the, that's the causal structure we think about. Our regressions with returns on the left and prices on the right are really telling us about the prices, not so much telling us about the return. It's telling us how our price is formed by time varying expected dividend growth or time varying expected returns. Now, this return identity, let, let's, let's look at those regressions a little more in detail. And, and the return identity helps us to, to digest the regressions. Here's the trick. Here are the regressions we've been running. Uh, returns on dividend price ratios and dividend growth on dividend price ratios. And this just establishes the notation, BR, BD, Epsilon R, and Epsilon D. Now, however, we have this identity linking returns, dividend growth, and, and dividend yield. So what does that mean? Well, uh, I'm just using the identity. So this equation goes to that equation. Dividend yield is, that's the future return, but I've substituted in from the regression equation. And that's the future dividend growth, substituted in from the, from the equation. Well, you can see the t terms and the t plus 1 terms have to be separately equal. So dp, brdp minus bddp, the regression coefficients have to add up. And similarly, the errors have to add up. So these two regression coefficients are, are not arbitrarily different things. They have to add up to 1. Now that already tells us, tells us something that we sniffed out. 
intuitively, we knew that expected returns and expected dividend growth, they sort of seemed like two sides of the same coin. They are exactly two sides of the same coin. Returns are predictable, and the predictability of returns and the predictability of dividend growth add up. They are telling us exactly the same thing. Once you know one, you know exactly what the other one is. Uh, they're two interesting sides of the same coin. It's intu good intuition to see both sides of the same coin. But, but those were two of our facts, and now you can see that they are, in fact, completely linked. The other big fact we saw was volatility. Well, this also tells us, this first identity tells us about volatility as well. Because a regression coefficient is the ratio of covariance to variance. So take that equation, the top equation, multiply both sides by the variance of dividend yields, and that equation is the same thing as saying the variance of dividend yields is its covariance uh, with, with returns and the covariance with dividend growth. So we can read that equation, 1 equals BR minus BD. That's a decomposition of variance. It tells us how much of the variance of prices is coming from its covariance with returns, from its ability to forecast returns, from time-varying expected returns, and how much is coming from time-varying dividend growth. That unites the observations about volatility with observations about predictability. They're not the different things. They are the same thing. Volatility tells us, uh, tells us about predictability. Now, the identities don't tell us which. The identities would be consistent with a world where expected cash flows are varying over time or a world in which expected returns are varying over time. What, impair what we can now find out is which one is it, and then once you know that one fact, we'll tie together return forecast, dividend growth forecast, and volatil volatility. You can see where it's going. It's all going to be expected returns, but we have to see that in the data. And to see it in the data, we have to do this right. We have to do this for multi-period securities, not just one-period securities. But the intuition and the logic is, even though the equations are going to get worse, the intuition and the logic is just the simple one you can see in this slide.